Hello everyone, how are you? Welcome to another question and answer session. Physiology portion of the MRCS. This is the question. After lung volumes, adult lung volumes, which statement is false? Uh, so we have to find out the false statement uh, regarding the options. Here are the answer options. First of all, in restrictive lung disease, the FEV1 and FBC ratio is normal. Residual volume is increased in emphysema. Functional residual capacity is measured by helium dilution test. The tidal volume is approximately 340 ml in females. The vital capacity is increased in guillain barre syndrome. So we have to find out one of the options which is not true regarding this question so first of all let's see the restrictive lung disease so here you can see in this side this is the restrictive lung disease that means the lung capacity restrict or decrease here we can see this is the lungs and the in this area we can see the plural cavity is more more large and the lungs is smaller due to different type of the elastic fiber in the lung deposition occurs and it is very difficult for this person to inflate these lungs so in a restrictive lung disease the lung volume is decreased the lung is more more stronger so the air entry in the lung poor here we can see this is the restrictive lung disease and here we can see the different type of the cause who is, is responsible for uh, this restrictive lung disease such as the trauma uh, kyphoscoliosis and kylogenic spondylitis neurovascular disease such as the guillain barre syndrome and morbid obesity scleroderma these are the uh, causes of the restrictive lung disease and in restrictive lung disease lung is uh, smaller and it is very difficult to enlarge the lung. And you can see FEV1 and FBC is normal or more than 80% in restrictive lung disease such as pulmonary fibrosis. So in case of a restrictive lung disease, the FEV1 and FBC ratio is usually more than normal or normal. And here you can see it is more than 80%. So it is more. That means uh, the person is able some sort of expansion of the lungs but at the same time the lung contract heavily for this condition FEV1 and FEC ratio usually more than 80 percent and a ratio is reduced in obstructive ERO disease such as the COPD bronchial asthma in this condition this FEV1 and FEC ratio is reduced so these two important point we have to remember one is the, when there is pulmonary fibrosis or restrictive lung disease there the FEV1 and FBC ratio more than 80 percent and where this is the COPD or emphysema in this condition FEV1 reduced and it is less than 80 percent and the functional residual capacity residual volume and the total lung capacity cannot measured by a spirometry so this point is very another important point that the residual capacity residual volume total lung capacity they are not measured by the traditional spirometer so what we have to do for this we have to do helium dilution test so helium dilution test they are a special test to measure the residual volume residual capacity and total lung capacity and here important uh, information regarding the vital capacity the vital capacity is reduced and increase some of the important factors so first of all let's see the vital capacity is uh, reduced in pulmonary fibrosis and infiltration in pulmonary fibrosis though the FEV1 and FVC ratio is more than 80 percent but the volume is reduced because the lung volume is very very smaller so air entry in the lungs is less but the air out from the lungs is very very high in, in percentage not in volume then here you can see the edema in edema also there is the vital capacity reduce and effusion 
that means the plural effusion in plural effusion the plural space takes more more space and in this condition the lungs volume reduce or lung anatomy reduce in size now see weak respiratory muscles such as the myopathies guillain barre syndrome in such type of condition they are also reduce the vital capacity in case of uh, guillain barre syndrome what happens there is the ascending paralysis that means first of all paralysis occurs in the lower part of the body that means in the lower limb then it gradually ascends upward and when it involves the respiratory muscle that means the diaphragm then this condition it is very difficult to take breath and patient usually died by the paralysis of the respiratory muscles and some skeletal abnormalities such as the chest wall abnormalities in this condition vital capacity also reduce and here we can see the difference between the obstructive and restrictive lung disease the obstructive lung disease that means there is obstruction in the airways that means the air entry is not possible or very small amounts of air entered in the lungs but in case of restrictive lung disease here the main pathological problem is failure to expansion of the lungs muscle but in case of obstructive lung disease the lung volume is usually more and here the examples here we can see the asthma copd and bronchiectasis so asthma copd and bronchiectasis they are the example of obstructive lung disease and in this condition air entry is poor but air trapping occurs that means the air present within the lungs and for this condition the lung volume is gradually increased on the other hand in case of the restrictive lung disease there is a reduction in the lung volume and the different type of cause which is responsible for restrictive lung disease such as the obesity neuromuscular cause scoliosis interstitial lung disease so they are the examples of the restrictive lung disease and here uh, the um, uh, our final uh, option here where we can see in restrictive lung disease fbvn and fbc usually is normal actually it is normal or high the residual volume is increased in emphysema in case of obstructive lung disease such as the <coughs> asthma, COPD and bronchiectasis in this condition residual volume is increased and also in emphysema because in emphysema the total lung volume is increased for this condition residual volume increase functional residual capacity is measured by helium dilution test it is true all uh, usually other capacity are measured by the spirometry but the functional residual capacity it is not measured by traditional spirometry the tidal volume is approximately 340 uh, in case of female it is true because in case of female the tidal volume is less the vital capacity is increased in guillain barre syndrome which is not true because in guillain barre syndrome there is the paralysis of the respiratory muscle and a reduction of the vital capacity and reduction of the respiration respiratory rate and all other parameters of the respiration so in case of in case of guillain barre syndrome there is vital capacity which is reduced thank you all